Hi, my name is John Paul Raj and I'm on a mission to make the learning of math fun. So if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. On this particular video, we're going to talk about how to find the numerical derivative of a function using the TNs by CX2. Let's start. When we find the derivative of a function, something like this, okay? So if you're given, you know, f of x is equal to x cubed minus two, and you use the power rule, any of the rules, if it's, you know, if required, if you're using the chain rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, you'll get the algebraic expression for f prime of x, and which is the expression for the slope of the tangent, okay? The general expression for the slope of the tangent of that function. And then when you substitute the value of x at a certain point, like in this case, the question says, find the gradient of the function at the indicated point. The gradient of the function is the slope of the function. Literally, it's asking us the slope of the tangent to the function at that indicated point. Okay, here we go. I'll show it to you algebraically first. So if you have f of x is x cubed minus two. Was it x cubed minus two? Yeah, and then, we know that the power rule tells us that that derivative is just going to be three x squared. So that three x squared is the general expression for the slope of the tangent to that function f of x is equal to x cubed minus two at any point. As such, when, when x is equal to one, so that means we're talking about that, that point one comma negative one, when x is equal to one, you'd get f prime of one, that's just replacing x by one, that's three, times one square, which is just three. And we substitute x equals one because we're looking for the gradient of the function at the point one comma negative one. So, you know, at that point, x is equal to one. So you substitute x equals one. But we're interested in finding out how to do this kind of question using the graphing calculator using RTNs by CX2. So let's jump right there. And this is the, uh, let's just add a calculator page, okay? First, what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to do the same question so that we can verify, okay? Let's just define the function, okay? f of x, f of x, all right? So assign key and then we just say x cubed minus two, right? Okay, so minus two and we defined it. And then we go to menu, calculus, numerical derivative at a point. You see that, you click that and it will ask you this, you know, what's the variable? So we say x, what's the value? Meaning, what's the value of x? We say x is equal to one. Okay, are we looking for the first derivative or the second derivative, all right? In this case, it's the first derivative. And we say, all right, and that's the syntax. Okay, that's the template. So d by dx, and there's an empty uh, space there. We can just actually type in f of x, okay? f of x, because f of x is already defined and that's the beauty of doing this way. And it's going to evaluate the derivative of the function at x equals one, when you just hit enter, it'll say three, just as we did it algebraically, you know, uh, using the rules, whatever the function has been defined. So if I go back to the calculator again, and I just make up another function, okay? Uh, let's say we have defined a function like, um, let's make it um, a simple uh, sign, maybe sine function, yeah, why don't? Uh, let's say sine of uh, two of x, all right, sine two of x, and we say, okay, that's uh, defined. Now, if you want to find the derivative, so I just go back here and I say calculus numerical derivative at a point, okay, we'll say the variable is x, and we'll say add the value, let's say x is equal to two. I know I'm just making this thing up. And this time, we'll say we want the derivative of f of g of x, composite function, chain rule, all right? And again, it's going to find the numerical derivative. That means that's the slope of the tangent of the composite function f of g of x, okay? Now, there's another way to come to this uh, template without going through the menu, but you need to remember what the template looks like. So if you if I use a template key, which is on the right-hand side of nine, if I go here and I just click this, can you see this? This is for the first derivative and that's for the second derivative. When I hit that, it'll give me just this template. It doesn't give me that condition, right? That condition line actually says, you know, at what point we're looking for. So we can, we can easily say d by dx and we can even type in f of x, okay? Uh, f of x, just to clarify, oh, I typed in g of x, never mind, let's do that g of x. Uh, so the derivative of g of x, I have to put that condition line. What's going to happen when we say no? It's going to give an error, all right? Because this is a non-cast version, okay? It says not defined because it's not a cast version, all right? So um, I have to come back to that and then I have to put that condition. That condition line is found right under the equal, uh, right under the control sign, you got that equal to sign, okay? So you go control equal to, 
And you've got all these conditions, greater than, less than. So that's that vertical bar. That's the condition. Use that. And there you can say, you know, you want to find the derivative, let's say, at x is equal to 1, 2, whatever the value you're looking for. And then it'll find the numerical derivative. Okay. So if you're using the template key, remember this template. Okay. So there's that condition line. And then x is equal to 2, the numerical derivative. Otherwise, you can go to menu and you can go through calculus and then you know make your way through numerical derivative and that will give you that pop-up window just enter the values even if you're finding the numerical derivative let's say uh, the second derivative the numerical value for the second derivative you can use this option but if you're using the cas version of the ti inspire cx2 maybe you're an ap student or maybe you're using this calculator for some exploration you know for a ia or ee then check out this uh, calculus menu you've got a lot more to play around with can you see that you can even find the expression okay so let's do that okay so here if I say d by dx and I've not defined any function, so let's just make up some function this time. All right, let's say you wanted to find the derivative of uh, arc cos of x, all right? It will it'll give you, it'll give you the uh, expression, okay? Not just the numerical value. And this is in degrees. So if I change that to radians, uh, you'll get, uh, and you'll get the derivative of arc cos or cos inverse of x, which is negative one over under root of one minus x squared. So make sure that you have that, uh, units for the angle set to radians if you're trying to use this version also. There are many other features also on the CAS, okay? So I'll just show you, you know, you can go and play around with it. You can find the equation of the tangent line, okay? Just take, let's take a look at that or the normal line. So if I go to uh, the tangent line and let's say you want to find the tangent line equation of the tangent line of a function like, let's say, uh, sine of x or sine 2x, whatever that is, or let's say sine half of x, okay? So control, uh, and let's say you want x over two, uh, and uh, I say comma x, that's always a syntax. And you need to uh, specify a particular point and say we want to find the equation of the tangent at x is equal to two. All right, so that's the syntax. The tangent line, equation of the tangent line for the function, sine of x by two is the function. Comma x is the syntax for all TI calculators, okay, in terms of x. And that two refers to at the value x is equal to two, you're finding the equation of the tangent line. Hit enter and you've got the equation of the tangent line just like that. Okay, so if you're using the CAS version, there are a lot of other fun things you can do, something like this. Uh, I'll let you explore, but I'll come back to the non-CAS version of the calculator. And let's take a look at some other questions that can be solved using the calculator. Okay, so if you look at question number five, uh, here it says, find the value or values of x so that f prime of x, the derivative of x is equal to zero, given that fx is equal to x cubed minus 8x, okay? So you want to find the value of x where the derivative becomes zero. Let's switch to the calculator, okay? This time what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add a, a new problem, insert a new problem, and so that you can define f of x, okay? Keep the same f of x. Uh, and what was the function? We had the function as x cubed minus 8x, so that's x cubed minus 8x. Right, so the function is defined and we want to solve. Remember it says you want to find the value of x so that f prime of x is equal to zero. So here we use the algebra menu. Okay, so go menu, algebra, and we'll say numerical solve. All right, numerical solve. And we don't even have to find the value of the derivative, you know, at any particular point. You can just say you're solving where the derivative. So we go to this option, bring that template and we say the d by dx of f of x is equal to zero, equals zero, comma x. Don't forget that template, okay? So solve when, so or find the value of x when the derivative of this function of fx as defined here is equal to zero. You say, okay, that's how you find the value of x where the derivative becomes zero. On another question, something like this, like, you know, where you have uh, the curve defined by, it says for the curve with the equation y is equal to x squared minus 12x, it says find the derivative, okay? Uh, that says find the derivative where x is equal to negative three. That was the numerical derivative. You've already seen an example like that, but take a look at this one, okay? You want to find the coordinates of the point where the gradient is four. Let's do this one, okay? Uh, we'll find the coordinates of the point where the gradient is four, and we'll take a look at this new function, okay? So it's x squared minus 12x, and we want to find the coordinates of a point where the gradient is four. Let's jump to the calculator, as always, a good habit is to insert a new problem for each question so that you can use that F, you know, all the time. Otherwise, you have to keep uh, changing the letters and that might be a conflict. And I've already, already made a, a video on problems and pages. The benefits of that, please go ahead and take a look at it, okay? So I'm going to define F of X as X square minus 12 X, X square minus 12 X and let's say done. And we want to find the coordinates of the point where the gradient is negative three. Again, let's bring out N solve first, okay? So uh, algebra, 
and in sol and here we go the derivative d by dx of f of x okay is equal to negative 3 right yeah where the, no sorry where the gradient is 4 i'm sorry i was reading the earlier one where the gradient is 4 and comma x okay don't forget that syntax so here we go so this is the x coordinate of the point where the derivative is equal to 4 now to find the y coordinate of this point all that we have to do is that we just have to say f of 8 because that's the x coordinate of the point where the gradient of the tangent is 4 the y coordinate of that uh, point will simply be you know substitute x is equal to 8 into the expression for the function and we just say enter and that's negative 32. So to answer the question about the coordinates of the point where the gradient is 4 we simply say okay that x coordinate is 8 whereas the y coordinate is a negative 32. Okay you understood how we did that right so using n solve we found out the x coordinate where the uh, derivative is equal to 4 and then using that value of x you know putting it substituting it into that expression for f we get the y value okay now let's take one more uh, example i'm going to what i'm going to do is that uh, let's insert another problem okay and this time let's just make up a function and uh, f of x is let's say you define this as uh, what should i say let's just get something in terms of tan perhaps okay tan of 3x tan of 3x okay you defined a function okay we just defined the function tan of 3x now if i go to the graph page if let's say if i've inserted a graph page okay i have not even found the derivative right and this is a non-cast version right i've not even found the derivative i can graph the derivative watch okay so all i'm entering right now is that i go to the template i just say d by dx and here i say f of x because f was defined on the calculator page, I can just say f of x. That's why it's become bold. I hit enter and that's the graph of the derivative of f of x. Isn't that really cool? Okay, I'm just going to slide it down. Okay, that's the graph of the derivative of f of x. We've not even found the derivative, but it will graph the derivative. And if there was a question, I just made this thing up to show you because there might be questions where you need to find out where the derivative is positive. Okay, positive means when it's above the x-axis. So we'll take a look at all those examples when you do a complete video on maxima, minima, and behaviors of functions. So if this video was useful to you, please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to this channel. I'm gonna see you all in the next video.